Welcome back to Sky Mods of the Moment! I'm Bard's college graduate and in this video I'll showcase some of the new mods that caught my eye while waiting in the nexus swamp of not safe for work mods. <laughs> Let us continue on and begin with the first new mod showcase. The first mod of today is very exciting, one that you could say revolutionizes the equipment of Skyrim. Sentinel, an equipment overhaul, adds a lot of community-created lore-friendly equipment to the game, distributing them to NPCs around Skyrim and adding them on the crafting system without needing to download any other file than this mod. How this mod works is that it uses leveled lists to introduce new variations of the existing items in the game. For example, making it possible for you to find or loot another version of a helmet or an armor. Or you can see NPCs wearing something different than what you are used to. These different variations come from the talented modders in the Skyrim modding community who have landed their work for this mod, as you might have recognized. This integration of modded equipment to the game feels smooth, as you come upon these new armors and weapons naturally. The chosen pieces of modded equipment don't stray too far from vanilla, and as I already said, look and feel more friendly and make Skyrim feel more diverse through the self-expression of one's chosen equipment. The next new mod is from the king of immersion, Jay Serpa, with his latest mod, Dremora Lines Expansion. This mod brings these demon-like Daedric warriors to life, giving them a crazy amount of 350 new lines and expanding their voices from only the one vanilla voice to seven different voices altogether. This mod features high-quality voice acting and splicing of the existing vanilla dialogue. What is your bidding? The dialogue is written to have the style of the vanilla, but spiced up just a tad to make it feel fresh. This mod also expands the variety of the Dramora. Yes, my mistress. And now it's even possible to face a female Dramora, which wasn't possible in the Vanilla Skyrim, even though it's canon. The connecting part of all these added voice lines is that the Dramora feel intelligent now, as they should be, and not just some mindless hell creatures. Face your demise, fool. I will obey. For now. Your death will be slow. With Dremora Lines expansion, now, whether you summon one of these warriors of oblivion or encounter one in the wild, the experience will be more varied and interesting. Ah, a fresh mortal who seeks to bargain. Ah, a fresh mortal who seeks to bargain with me. Now, I feel like in every video of mine, there is a mod that affects the city of Whiterun. And so, in this video, there is one as well, of course. Whiterun Has Walls is a simple mod that fixes Whiterun's rundown, crumbling defensive walls, as it would make sense for a central trade city to be well fortified. Now the walls are sure to keep enemies out of the city, and I think defending Whiterun from the horrors of war should be easier. Especially with my choice of JK's Whiterun, these walls look really good and overall I think they fit the aesthetics of the Tundra Hold as well as the city itself. Story time. For the majority of my characters in RPGs, I have always gone for the barbarian type, Zweihander wielding warriors like in World of Warcraft, where I have always played an arms warrior. Now I've been shifting towards other types of classes, but two-handers are always in my heart. Okay, story time over. The next mod, KG Animations Two-Handers, is of course a vanilla animation replacer for the two-handed weapons. The mod's focus is in differentiating great swords from battle axes and warhammers with the new animations. For the great swords, there are new animations for almost everything, for being idle, equipping, walking and running. Your character will hold the greatsword on their shoulder when standing still with the sword drawn out, which looks pretty cool. Of course, the attack animations are also remade, from normal attacks to power attacks, as well as blocking and bashing. Battle axes and warhammers animations, on the other hand, 
are changed a little bit less. The idle, equipping, walking and running animations are only for the first person, as the author thinks the third person vanilla animations look good for these types of weapons. Also, normal attacks and different power attacks are redone for battle axes and warhammers and look quite fantastic. This mod is great for overhauling the spy hunter animations without making them too flashy. Next mod is one of my favorites from today's video. Tasha's hideous laughter adds this Baldur's Gate 3 spell in the Skyrim for you to use on an unsuspecting enemy. For those who haven't played BG3 or don't know it from D&D, this spell makes your target fall on the ground, laughing hysterically, unable to do anything else. When installed in your game, the power automatically appears in your spell menu, which you can use to make a humanoid creature immobilize with laughter for 20 seconds. I've gone absolutely crazy for BJ3, and having this in my Skyrim is just the perfect little thing. Next, we have Pandorable's Dunmer Damsels. Pandorable is well known for her gorgeous NPC replacers, and now she's back at it with a pack of 8 beautiful makeovers for some of Skyrim's Dark Elf ladies. This mod includes replacers for the following NPCs. Afia Velothi, who is a priestess and a restoration trainer in Solstheim. She looks beautiful with her new hair and dark red lipstick, but also tired as her situation with her husband is somewhat taxing. Idessa Sadri works for the House of Clan Cruel Sea as the caregiver to Grimvar, the child of Hillavi and Thorstein Cruel Sea. Idessa rocks a short haircut, and I can't help but think she looks too good for the icy Windhelm. There is another dark elf lady in Windhelm that gets overhauled by this mod, and that is Lofin, the bard in Candlehearth Hall. She seems shy and her hair is perfect. She must be one of my favorite bards in the province. Maris Arvel is a vendor in the center market of Riften, selling fresh meats and produce, and all of that free of rock joint. She is a kind-hearted woman, and the new look suits her more than well. I especially love the detail of that scarf on her head. In Riften, there is also a woman called Niluva, who is sadly a skooma addict and worried she's going to be kicked off of her job at the Blackbriar Meadery. Her makeover gives her a classic pandorable look, but it also uncovers the affliction she's battling with the apparent redness on her face. Outside of Riften, in Merifer Farm, Cinda Lanith farms the land with her husband. She gets a wonderful makeover with Pandorable's Dunmer Damsels, but still looks the part of a modest farmer in Skyrim. Medresitran can be found in the Nordic tomb of Angarwund, and she has a job for you if you're up for the task. She might be a greedy and fearless treasure hunter, but she looks damn good while at it. Finally, a sorceress called Merilar Rendas will attack you on sight in a Nordic tomb in Solstheim, and her visual overhaul is top notch, making her look beautiful, albeit unhinged, which, well, she is. <laughs> a little bit. That's that for our beautiful Dark Elf ladies, now let's move on to other matters completely. The next mods on the list animate some of the tents of Skyrim. These are Imperial tents animated and Small Nordic tents animated. Both of these mods are powered by Base Object Swapper and they replace the meshes for the tents, animating them, which results in looking like the wind is blowing on them. These sort of mods are just nice little touches in the world of Skyrim to make it seem more alive and, of course, immersive. Speaking of immersion, there is one new mod that absolutely cracked me up and I just knew I needed to showcase it today in this video. Some of the books in Skyrim are written by NPCs that you can meet in the world, even talk to them, but there is just no dialogue option for you to compliment the authors for their books. Autographs of Skyrim adds precisely this interaction in the game, allowing you to get a book signed by the author if you happen to have the author's book in your inventory. And now you have the book with the autograph of the author. What more can I say? Simple, fun immersion, peak Skyrim modding. 
I don't think I've showcased any user interface mods yet in my channel, so it's best to begin with a small one. Gauntlet Cursors Collection adds a variety of gauntlet-shaped cursors in your game, which are designed for the vanilla UI, as well as Nordic, Untarnished and Dear Diary UIs. I, I don't know how I have managed without this mod in my life. Gauntlet and hand-shaped cursors in games are elite, and I literally can't play Dota without this Necrophos cursor. Now I have this in Skyrim and couldn't be happier. Well, the last mods have been quite small and sweet, so let's end this video with a more grand mod. I love to have a player home as the last mod in my videos, and today it will be Yalmar Manor, a new large manor house and a settlement for you, the player, to live in. Yalmar Manor is located between Riverwood and Whiterun, and the view from here to Whiterun and the Tundra area is breathtaking. The whole player home area is actually a settlement, with a lot of people and merchants, with of course the purchasable manor and a gold mine. You can buy this property from manor, Commander Cornelius for 55,000 gold. Finally, there's something that you can splurge your hard-earned septims on. Additionally, you can also hire private guards to guard the property for 10,000 gold. The manor itself is a great place to live, and it includes everything you'd ever want from a functional and high-quality player home. In addition to the player's bedroom, the home has two extra bedrooms for your followers. The home also features a bathhouse, mannequins, weapon display room, crafting stations that are fully equipped each, library, planters, and a great dining room. You know, it's a manor after all. The NPCs on the property have daily schedules and their own homes, and the vendors sell goods at the stalls. Miners work during the day at the gold mine, children run around the place, and all this makes the place feel quite alive, when usually these sort of big mansions leave you kind of lonely in the end. I'd like to give a big thank you to my supporters over at Patreon, for they make it possible for me to continue creating here at YouTube. And a special shout out to my Tavern's legendary patrons, Star095, Ryan Ulrich, Apeli, Arthur Lucan, and Carrot Guy Kai. It is such an honor to have people supporting my channel, and I'm just eternally grateful for that. If you enjoy the videos, check out patreon.com slash bardscollegegraduate for ways to support and for some extra content. Thank you for watching the video! I hope you enjoyed these new mods, and maybe found something new for your Skyrim as well. If you did, let me know in the comments down below, I'm always eager to hear your guys' thoughts. The links for the mods are in the description, and there you can also find other information regarding my mods, PC and game. Take care and see ya!